but that don't last long. Mm-hmm. It lasts for only a ma- few minutes. But he said there's another way to have eternal peace and happiness. Mm-hmm. That's this path to what you call nirvana. Yes. So, Pratipati Puja means you follow the Buddha by following his path mm-hmm. of purity and that you know, way of life. Uh, I think we have translated to our next topic, which is actually the Buddhist way of life. Um, Swami Mahasi, if you could tell us a little bit about, like we've been discussing the Buddhist way of life through our discussion of Vesak as well, and um, if you could give us a brief understanding of what the Buddhist way of life means to Sri Lankans and to people who follow Buddhism around the world. Yeah, now uh, there are frequent questions that are asked uh, regarding Buddhism. In Sri Lanka and also all over the world, uh, some of them are whether Buddhism is a philosophy yes. or whether the Buddhism is a religion. Mm-hmm. But uh, nowadays, most of the learned Buddhist scholars would like to put it as a Buddhism is a way of life. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, to, s- to say it relating to the words of the Buddha, there were some questions that were put to the Buddha by uh, eminent and uh, well-known disciples. At, tho- at, at that time, when, they, when such questions were put, the Buddha remained silent without answering. Now, Buddha, there were several ways of answering, but uh, to, uh, the Buddha remained silent without answering. Why the Buddha was remaining without answering certain questions was because that they were not directly helpful to the advancement of that person who had put the questions to the Buddha. Uh, the, some, of, uh, some of those questions were when this world started mm. and when, when it is going to end, to end <laughs> such questions. So the Bud- Buddha say, now knowing that answer is not going to be helpful right now for your advancement. I am r- here right now to teach you the way for your advancement of life, especially the spiritual advancement. Now, from this very particular example, we can think that Buddha wanted us as his disciples to use his teaching uh, for the ad- for the spiritual advance advancement of our life. That is why uh, the Buddhist scholars like to put the put put Buddha's teaching as something a way of life from morning to evening then from evening to again morning, from your birth to death, uh, there are things that could be followed at your level, at my level and at, the, at, the, at our level. Of course, it is true that, uh, that all are not able to renounce the world yes. and it was not true even at the time of the Buddha, even at the time of the Buddha, only a very small percentage of people who, they were who, who renounced the world. Mm. It is same even now. So, Buddha knew this truth. Mm-hmm. Buddha, knowing this truth, Buddha always says, you have to start the spiritual advancement at your level. Now, uh, to give one uh, example, one day one young uh, person called Panchasika uh, came to the Buddha and he said uh, he wanted to uh, sing a song. Uh, it is recorded in the uh, Sakka Panya Sutta in the Diga Nikaya. I am uh, I am giving those terms as could be understood by our audience. So, uh, the, he said, and he he was a sing- musician. He came in front of the Buddha and said he wanted he he want to sing a song. Buddha said, yes, okay, go on. Then uh, he sang a song. All the words, lyrics were about his uh, girlfriend, <laughs> and he he was praising wi- while while playing the violin. He was praising the girlfriend. Then at the end, the Buddha said, "It is a nice piece of artistic work. Mm-hmm. It is a fine work. Mm-hmm. The lyrics match m- lyrics match music well, and uh, vice versa." Mm-hmm. Then the Buddha said, "Not only that, you are." Work is unique, not only fine art of work, but also unique because uh, in the lyrics, the last two lines were praising the parents, pra- praising the parents. I, I respect the father who gave me this daughter, who gave this daughter to me. Now, actually, the, the word father represents parents in that society. Now, 
uh, this show, then the Buddha says, you are, this presentation is unique because you give not only the en enjoyment but some ethical idea to the society. By using this instrument of music, the tool called music, you are going to, you are trying to give, give an idea of ethics, mm -hmm. ethics, good behavior to the world. So that is very important. The, the mere enjoyment of life is not the, not the sole thing in life. Mm -hmm. We have to advance ourselves, advance to work for the advancement of our humanity. I think that is what is called Pratipati Puja. Thank you, Swami Vansa. With that, we have to go in for a short commercial break. But just after um, our program of GMSL, please stay tuned for a documentary on a very special gentleman called V. Palan. Also, at 5 p.m. today, you can all join us from the Vesak Kalapya to um, witness um, the two relics that have been brought in uh, all the way from Candy. So we hope you join us there. So on the other side of JMSL, we have a lot more to discuss on the Buddhist way of life, especially in context to how it applies to us in the present day. So we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to JMSL. We've been discussing the Buddhist way of life to coincide with Vesak on this very special episode of Good Morning Sri Lanka and we have two very special guests who've really been educating us on the real meaning of Vesak and the Buddhist way of life as a philosophy and also as a religion and we were just before the break we were discussing what um, uh, Buddhism really means to people and I'd like to direct my next question to Professor. Professor, as a layperson, can you explain to us what the Buddhist way of life has been translated by the people of Sri Lanka especially? When I say Buddhist way of life, you mean how a person lives as an ideal Buddhist. Yes. So how you live your life as an ideal Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Now we have been told for laymen there are five precepts to observe. Yes. Those, the aim of the five precepts is to make yourself a better person with others. Yes. So, before I said, first you must be at peace with yourself, mm -hmm. then you establish peace with others. Yes. The five precepts are aimed at making you live happily with others. Mm -hmm. So, your relations with others is much better now. Yes. For example, you start with life. You appreciate other people's lives. Mm -hmm. You don't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. So very first precept says, I shall not kill or I abstain from killing others. Mm -hmm. But you take the entire thing, it means I will not hurt anybody physically. Mm -hmm. The ultimate thing is to kill somebody. But still you can hurt others physically without killing anybody. Mm -hmm. But so when you say I don't kill, it doesn't mean that you do hurt others physically and not kill. No, it means I will not hurt anybody physically, mm -hmm. neither human being or no anim animal. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, you appreciate the life of others. Yes. Just like, as much you like your own life, you are made to appreciate or love others. So to clarify, yeah. Professor, the wider meaning of the first precept is not simply the literal meaning? No, no, it means I, I shall not kill, I will not take, say, I will not take anybody's life. Yes. That's what it Literally. says in Pali, mm -hmm. I will not destroy the life of others. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate thing about it. But you can hurt others physically without killing anybody. Mm -hmm. I can stab somebody five times and uh, not kill. But uh, I guess well, I, I haven't killed anybody. Yeah, you haven't. But you have uh, done enough harm to that person. Mm -hmm. So I interpreted that killing means the, the avoidance of physical hurt or physical destruction to others. Okay. Similarly, I don't take what belongs to others, but that makes everybody unhappy. Yes. If I find somebody, I can ask you, then you will give it to me. But taking things from others without their permission, mm -hmm. it's called stealing normally, yes. you shouldn't do that because it hurts somebody. Somebody loses something and is not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you were a third one where you say, I will not claim adultery, which means I will not live with other people's wives and other people's husbands, it's going to hurt a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Your husband, your wife, that other person's husband, wife, their children, your children, many people are brought into problem because that simple few moments happiness with another man, another woman. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you lie, you can put others into trouble. If they're really false, it can make others very unhappy about it and they can, you can put them into trouble. Yes. Similarly, once you get drunk, you don't know what to, you lose your senses. Mm -hmm. 
So once you lose your senses, you don't know what you are doing. So you can again hurt others mm -hmm. by getting drunk in that state of drunkenness. Mm -hmm. So these are five precepts which if you observe the five, you establish better relations with others. Mm -hmm. Now, then you turn at yourself on a special day like tomorrow. Yes. Saying, I, to, from today I will, at least for, the, for today I will control my senses. We have five senses which bring trouble to us. So we, so you start with, say, food. You like to eat. But on tomorrow you said, after certain time, after the main, main meal, I will not take any food or drink. Yes. So you are controlling your tongue, mm -hmm. the, the organ of taste. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the other thing says, uh, I will control my eyes, not watch various things today. I will not listen to music, control your ears. I will not um, control your nose. I will not have perfumes, all kinds of things today. So, and then finally you say, now that when as a layman, the third precepts mean, I will not commit adultery. Yes. But on this day you change that, say, I will uh, uh, kind of uh, re retain my celibacy. You can have sex with your wife. As a layman, you can't have other people's wife. But on this day, you can, you will not have sex even with your own wife. Mm -hmm. All this legal. Because you are going to control the senses now. So that's how you change the third one on a poor day mm -hmm. to another one. Similarly, this has been misunderstood, Reverend Sir, which says, today I will avoid comfortable seats or beds. Yes. Uchasana, Mahasayana means, Sayana means bed. So today I will avoid big comfortable beds. You use a bed for sleeping, mm -hmm. to make your body happy. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to be awake, okay. not sleep. So Sayan has been unfortunately interpreted as asana. So you say uchasana and they get people to avoid seats and sit on the floor. Yes. I think this complete mis I, I, I like your comment on that matter. I say complete misunderstanding. What they do is, is sit on the floor and sleep. What it means really is avoid the bed today. Don't go to bed. Be awake. That's the whole point. That's how you're going to get your body. Yes. No, but, no, you, when you sleep, it c makes your com body completely uh, comfortable. Yes. But today, don't do that. Avoid the bed, be up, up and about, and be awake. That's the whole point. Unfortunately, this has been misunderstood. That, see, for, for generations, we have been sitting on the floor, and a lot of women uh, kind of uh, lean against pillars and keep on sleeping. We, because they avoid the asana. Unfortunately, sayana, not asana. Which are sayana. Sayana means bed. Isn't that so, yeah. Reverend? Mm. So, so, yes, yes. Uh, can I add a small point, very mm -hmm. simple point to yes. the profound explanation by, by our professor? Mm, now, he, he was giving a very enlightening explanation of these five prayers which are being observed tomorrow on full moon poetry. Now, actually these precepts are very much deeper and wider in meaning. Mm -hmm. Now to cite one uh, point, we have the, this word pāna in, in the first precept, mm -hmm. pāna, tipāta. Mm -hmm. Their pāna means uh, living things, pāna means living things. Yeah.